Right, let's go. Today, we are reviewing one of the worst games ever made. And I'm not kidding, this was made. This was actually a thing. I didn't make this for a meme, this exists. And with that, I know the questions will appear, and I am going to answer them. First off, is the game as bad as it looks? Yes. Why would you review it in the first place? Yes. Um, if this is your first time being on my channel, I'd like to give you an introduction. Hi, I'm a fly, and just like a fly, I am drawn to shit, and the worse it is, the better for me. So why am I even going over this in the first place? Because I am drawn to bad shit, and anything that's bad is worth covering. So just because I cover the bad does not mean I agree with the bad, and this is bad. No, this is not bad, this is terrible. And just like the fly, I need to be all over it. Also, if you're new, you'll notice that my mic quality will sadly shift. It lives its own life, and I don't know why. The Space Marines are super augmented human warriors that are supposed to be thrown again. Yeah, it can get pretty bad. Do I look like I know what a JP is? I just want to Racial Holy War, shortened Rahu Wa, was a game created for the pen paper dice role playing scene. The game only got a first edition, and the first edition was fairly short, as it was only 18 pages long. The game got a physical release round about never, because fucking duh. The game has remained obscure since inception. The few times it has been talked about, it was primarily on TG, with no real positive inclinations whatsoever. For obvious reasons. The game has its own article written about itself on 1D4chan. I have linked it below. Go and check it later. The world's lore is fairly short and simple. In the near future, you notice that white is not the dominant color on the playing board. You think to yourself, hey, this isn't right, and so you look for a solution. Your only solution was to remove all the other offending colors on the playing board until only yours remain, because that's the only one that deserves to exist. So in order to make right, you decide to put every penny you have, savings, and whatnot into buying the best gear available for your coming rampage. So now you have set yourself loose on a path to conquest, to root out all evil that does not bend to the notion that your card collar type is the best. And there will be no stopping until you have proven to all on the message board that your empire will rule supreme. And this is about as much world building we are going to have. As for existing campaigns and stories, there really aren't any. You make up your stories yourself and go from there. One potentially fun thing worth of note though is that in this, you are not designated Dungeon Master. You're designated War Master. Does this mean that Horus Lupercal was a resist? I mean, that wouldn't be too impossible. There are space marines that don't like humans. I have heard among the brothers that you are a racist now, father. I am good. Once you've all decided on who's going to be War Master, you then pick your class, you pick your race and... Oh yeah, I forgot. You then pick your class. You are done. Um, nearly, anyways. There's a fair few classes to pick from. There's gladiator, there's leader, soldier, scholar, hero, sniper, athlete, and medic. Once you've picked one of the following classes, it is time to attribute 100 points to 8 basic attribute skills. These are power, dexterity, health, heroism, charisma, intelligence, wisdom, intimidation, respect, honor, and hit points. They are your standard roleplay affair, with an exception of heroism and honor. Honor is given out at the discretion of the War Master, who decides when a player has done something honorable or dishonorable will gain or lose a point. However, in accordance to the text, you are not supposed to lose more than one or two points per event. The only use honor seems to have is whether you died with a sore ass in the mud or whether you did a flip upon jumping, while heroism seems only to be there to raise your chance of successfully using the rouse skill, which when I read through it, sounds more like a communist thing than anything else. But hey, I don't judge. There is also attribute effects, with wonderful examples I might add, and skills to help you in game. And upon reading through this list, I found this trait, which, if anything, made me think that maybe, just maybe, she was right. Uh, moving on, please. In the next section, we find guns, of which there is only three classifications. Pistols, assault rifles, and shotguns. I suppose rocket launchers aren't a part of it. Combat is separated into two types. There's gun combat, and there is hand-to-hand -hand combat. Nothing major of note here, but there was one thing. As for enemies? No. 
I'm not going to say that. You already know who the enemies are to these people. And if you don't, well, I'll just make it very simple for you. It's everyone. And they refer to everyone by the worst synonym and phrase you can think of. And probably some you didn't even know was a thing. I wouldn't be surprised if the only people who play this game are the kind of people who have a pathological fear of showers, long noses, and compliments from other men. And they will probably do anything in their might to stay as far away from them as is physically possible. Lastly, I'm gonna take a look at its poster. This is the only picture I have that is a reference to the game. And there is a slight bit of a worry to it. And that's this symbol right here. Was this meant to be a fucking computer game? I mean, it turned out to be a pen paper role playing game, but I wondered who the hell would find this on shelves and find this interesting to purchase. This might be a case similar to the Packy situation when the cover was made before the game was even a thing. But it is possible that maybe, just maybe, there's a physical copy of it out there somewhere. Someone dumb enough to having decided that this is fine to print. And if it exists, I need to know of it. That would be atrocious. Because like I said with the fly, I can't stay away. This is typically where I'd end the video, because there's nothing really else to address. We've talked about the game, and there's probably not that much to talk about when it comes to the creator of the game. Well, in this particular occasion, you might be wrong. Last time when we covered Fatal, we also tried to find the creator Byron Hall in any way, shape or form. Nobody did afterwards or anything like that. But he pretty much faded into obscurity, and nothing was ever found. But with the creator of Rahu Wa, it's a little bit different. We have some information in regards to him. I've tried to set a timeline as for events that I know to some degree about and try to nail down a little bit about him as to his history and whatnot. So trying to make a cohesive timeline. As there currently isn't really one describing him in any great detail, I'm going to do so the best way I can by just compiling sources that I have. So do understand that I'm doing this as good as I can and uh, Take this with a grain of salt, but this is generally the story that I was able to find about the creator of the game. Kenneth Molyneux was born around about 1978, and around the time he went to high school, he started to have a little bit of a different kind of idea of how the world was meant to be. This was about the time that he had become radicalized, but we don't get any notion about how this happened, whether it was done through online measurements or other things, but one can speculate. Regardless, he did go on to go to college, but he wasn't there for longer than a year. As a matter of fact, he didn't even finish a year before he decided to drop out entirely. So as a fresh dropout out of high school, he decided to spend most of his days going around online, finding people who had similar beliefs to him. This was during the time when he found something called the World Church of the Creator. Kind of a strange thing to be doing as well to join a church when actually he despised most religions at this time. And funnily enough, he could be actually said to be an atheist. Regardless of that, when he joined the church, he was still kind of a pessimistic asshole and not very productive, and actually was, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, just an asshole. But this eventually changed when he decided to purchase the Holy Books of Creativity, a series of books that was created by a man known as Ben Classen. And Ben Classen is a man of his own caliber. Being an American politician born in 1918 and lived until 1993, he was indeed a very special man and eventually he did organize a foundation known as Creativity, which is what I believe is currently very much so affiliated with the Church of the Creator. Might even be so that they're the same organization at this point in time. I haven't checked that deep, honestly. But regardless, our main man, Mr. Molyneux, have actually purchased the book and has read through it. And boy, did he like it. He apparently turned his entire life around, not to the point of becoming a good guy, but rather, he just became worse because he started to become way more active in things, but at the same time, he turned his belief, not into belief, but a religion. This was no longer just something that he thought of and believed in, this was gospel. This was truth, everything else was lies. In around about 2002, he was going around and putting flies on cars around their windshields with various messages that are not particularly nice, let's put it that way. Molyneux was then taken to prison around this time and was put into a three-month sentence in jail. However, some of the time was averted and turned into community service instead. And since coming out, as far as I know, he continues to work with the Church of Creativity, probably still attached to them and writing for them to this very day. From my understanding, he is still alive to this day and is currently 42 years old. As to where he lives and whatnot, don't know, don't care. 
Sadly though, I have no conclusion as to when he was actually writing on Rahuwa, and therefore I cannot set a date upon when it was actually delivered. However, it still does exist on 1D4chan, and it has been there for a fair bit of time. If you'd like to go watch it yourself, link is in the description. As for me, I'm going to sign off from this video now because I've been on this topic for far longer than I probably should have. Regardless though, I'd like to thank you everyone so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and share the video around as it does help me a lot. Oh, and I also do have a Patreon. And for the people that have been supporting me on Patreon, I am very thankful for you having continued to do so, even though it has been quite dry on videos lately. If you yourself want to support, link below. But now to another little special thank you I want to give to a person that has helped me with this video. And that is Isaac Wolf. He's providing me with great music and is the reason why I can have these awesome intros now. So, if you'd like to do that, please consider supporting him too. Link will be in the description to his stuff too. And lastly, because it is very appropriate to the video, I'm going to be chilling a special little friend of mine, Nickberia. Nickberia has been helping me a fair bit over the course of time with my subscriber base having helped my channel grow from what it was, kinda to what it is actually. And with that, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.